Hi, I'm Candace Adams, President and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, New England Properties, Westchester Properties, and New York Properties. I started in residential real estate when I was a young mom of two, two babies actually, and a messy real estate experience made the process of moving more stressful than ever. I believe that in real estate and beyond, it is the connections we make and the network we build that empowers us to thrive. Conversations matter. In this collection of conversations, I connect with our real estate professionals to get insight into their daily lives, who they are as people, and all that they're doing beyond the closing table. This series highlights agents as guides through change and transition, from helping young families find their first homes to downsizing or upgrading. Our agents are doing more than buying and selling properties. They're making life happen, and I can't wait for you to meet them. understanding all aspects of the transaction and making it a worry-free experience for his buyers and sellers, our guest today has mastered the art of putting his clients at ease through what would what could be a very stressful process. His response time is immediate. That's right, immediate. He excels in negotiating and working through any situation to get to the closing table. Most importantly, the relationships he has built will last a lifetime. His clients are treated like family. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce you to Sam Granada, an award-winning sales associate working out of our Shelton, Connecticut office today. Hi, Sam. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Candice, thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad I'm here. I'm so excited to to talk with you. What a career you've had so far. It hasn't been a real long one, but it's been pretty fantastic. So excited to hear all about that today. So we're going to just start right off the bat and get a bit of your history. Sure. Yeah. Tell us what you did before real estate. I know you had some other interests and, and tell us what you learned from those experiences and how it evolved into this business. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I guess I, I went to school for meteorology. I came back and was offered a position on like the opposite side of the spectrum, restoring vintage cars. So <laughs> I went back to school for automotive. I did that for, you know, almost 10 years. And, you know, so through like the the broad range of past interests, I think that the, the most important thing that I learned was that I needed to be involved with a career that I really enjoy. Something that I'm, I'm passionate about where I can wake up every day and enjoy, really enjoy what I'm doing. And, you know, real estate just happened to fit the bill. You know, it's, it's one of those jobs where you essentially wake up every day unemployed. And you know you don't have to you don't have to work, and you certainly don't have to to work towards being successful. You know, there's always struggles with with every job, but loving what you do gives you the sort of freedom that allows you to to live, in my opinion, a happier life. Wow, and that's so true. More, more than ever, right now, to to love what you do is so important. So, but tell me why why do you say that real estate is your passion. What, what about it, it? It makes you so passionate. <laughs> so that's a good question. Um, I remember as a, uh, a little kid being told that we were going to move and um, I didn't want to leave my neighborhood and I certainly didn't want to leave my friends that I grew up with, but I was excited at the prospect of driving around and, and looking at homes. You know, it was a new adventure, uh, new neighborhoods to visit, new places to see. And as a little kid, it, it was exciting to drive around and, and look at homes. So when it came time for me to make a decision on a new career path, the only decision I had to make really was where to get my real estate license. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those things that I already knew what I wanted to do. You know, I um, wanted to kind of revisit the excitement of touring different towns and neighborhoods and helping people realize their dream of home ownership. So it was a perfect match for me. And, you know, it's uh, the type of career that I'll never get bored of. All right. So how old were you when you had to make that move? When you decided, <laughs> so I was I was eleven. I was eleven. <laughs> I was I was just old enough to kind of know what was going on, and you know, so it was exciting. Okay, well, the, you're you're first that you actually started in your mind your real estate career at eleven years old. So that's really <laughs> interesting. So building relationships and gaining the trust of clients is is really such an important part of, of this profession as a whole. But but you do it in, in a way that brings it to a whole different level of, of these relationships. So tell tell me about you know how do you establish that initial trust and what how does the relationship evolve? Yeah, so you know generally I'm not the type of person that beats around the bush. 
you know, people want to feel comfortable in the fact that you're an expert in your field and that you're providing sound advice through the entire process of buying and selling a home. So I think that having the confidence in the advice that you're giving through your experiences gives your clients peace of mind. And in turn, it gives them, it gives you the trust that, you know, is required to have a a smooth and successful transaction. So what are some tips that you have for supporting your clients through a successful transaction? So, you know, not without giving away your trade secrets, what, you know, what are some of the key things that you see through a transaction that, that can help a client through that? So I think that it it all kind of boils down to the advice that you give them. You know, having a plan for for every potential corner that you turn or, you know, any event that can arise throughout a deal to kind of maintain your client's trust in the fact that you can help them navigate through anything that comes up. And do you have talked about treating your clients like their family? Can you think of a story about a client that you've had and how that relationship really was like family for you? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's funny because I've had several clients throughout the years that, you know, I've helped either buy or or sell homes or whatever the case is. And, you know, they keep either referring family or friends and they also continue to buy and sell homes. And, you know, over the years, they've, they've, essentially become either really good f- friends or family members. And, you know, it's, it's the type of people that you stay in touch with, you know, if not every few days, at least weekly. And, you know, it's, it's basically nonstop because different parts of their lives and, you know, different events that happen, you're always kind of staying in touch and, and just staying together with them. And I think that's the essence of this business, really, Sam. I think you've captured it. And, and that is that it's such a personal thing to buy or sell real estate. Um, that you do end up becoming personally attached to to these people and your relationships. That's so nice. So you have a team, your own team, the Granada Group. Can you tell me what led you to form a team and and what do you see as the benefits of having a team? Yeah, so um, I started the team in 2019. The issue that I started having was that I would see a lot of the leads that were coming slip through. And I think that you know, I had the the clients that I was actively working with, you know, they were basically receiving 100% of my attention. But, you know, there, there came a point where I felt that I was like starting to lose business. And, you know, I came up with a plan to start a team in order to make sure that every lead that came in was followed up with, while also kind of freeing my time a little bit so I can focus more on the list side. And so how many people do you have on your team today? Right now I have four. Great. Perfect number. Okay. Great. Technology is a big part of what you do. And can you just give me an idea in your mind how technology has changed our industry as a whole and and how you think they might benefit you and your clients? Yeah, absolutely. So technology is constantly changing real estate. And, you know, the changing technology absolutely benefits both buyers and sellers. You know, on the On the buy side, there's all sorts of different internet and social tools that, you know, kind of allow buyers to stay up to date on active listings, alerts, basically anything that they need to find out or want to know. And also the the digitally signed paperwork and dot loop, you know, all those kind of things just make everything easier and a lot quicker. You know, you don't have to necessarily meet with somebody in the office now in the middle of a snowstorm or a middle of a pandemic. You can just kind of email everything off, give them a quick phone call, explain everything, and then boom, it's signed. It's five minutes versus, you know, two or three hours out of your day. So that definitely helps out a lot. On the list side, everything is quickly transitioning into the digital world. You know, the internet is a place where everybody gets their information now. So when I, when I first started in real estate, there were horrible cell phone pictures you know, you had exposure on maybe just a couple of the internet sites. And this isn't even that long ago. This is 2012. You know, there's only a couple of internet sites that have the listings. And then, you know, just in the last couple of years, things have just changed so quickly that now you have virtually staged pictures. You have actual video walkthroughs and and big social media campaigns. And, you know, the tools that you have now allow you to get crazy exposure to buyers looking for homes. And I think that this you know, exposure helps buyers find a home, but it also helps the sellers sell their home at a record pace. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. So I would say, I think that we saw the technology exponentially increase in terms of how people were using it during COVID. And so you're, you're, it sounds like you're thinking that that'll continue as we move forward in the future. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's it's one of those things that it's it's a change. The change happened and I don't see it going back. I just kind of see it progressing. Yep, I agree. Agreed completely. So you, you are the social media king, I'll call you. So why did you start focusing on on social media? And certainly your qual- your production quality of your videos is incredible. So I'd love to hear more about how that evolved. And, and you're just, as I said, you're the social media king. How do you have time for it? Yeah, well, you know, that's a good question. So, you know, we had we had the whole COVID thing where people weren't really coming out to homes. So, you know, you had to find a, a better way to get people into houses. And professionally shot pictures are only going to kind of take you so far. You can have great photos of a home, but they don't actually tell you a story. They just shoot the pictures of like a kitchen or a bathroom, but there's no feeling there. So. You know, I, I really do believe, and I say this all the time, that video is going to be the future of real estate. So whether it's 60 seconds or 90 seconds, it gives you the opportunity to really tell the story of a home. So I'm, I'm basically able to point out in person what makes a home special and why somebody would actually want to buy it. It's just, it's geared more towards the feeling that the home presents versus just taking pictures of a bedroom or taking pictures of an outside. So you really seem to have this great personality for the camera. Now, maybe that started when you thought you would be a meteorologist. I don't know if it was whether that interested you or being on camera, but you certainly have a really great camera personality. And you even had a home featured on Financing the American Dream recently. And how did you go about creating those opportunities for yourself? Or or did they just stumble upon a star? No, yeah. I mean, so it's it's one of those situations where I guess I just say yes a lot. You know, it's one of, you know, people, people from, from different industries see me on either social media or YouTube videos. And, you know, they have an idea of something that they want to do to market. They give me a call and, you know, I just always say yes. And they just, they just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of happens. The, The opportunities just kind of show up. Well, it's never by luck for sure. So do you have any tips for agents wanting to expand their social media presence? Yeah. So I, you know, it's funny. I don't, I never really considered myself good at social media. It's just one of those kind of things where, you know, I post something that, that represents what I'm doing or going through, like in my real estate career. So I guess if I had any advice, it would be really just to be yourself, let people know what you do and how you navigate your real estate world. You know, the more they see you and the more they see how you operate, the more trust people have in you before they even reach out. So, you know, I think it's just trying to stay visible so that potential clients think of you before they reach out to another agent. Do you use your social media when you first are introduced to a client? Is there anything you send to them via social media or a video other than your your in-person contact? Is there something that you do as a leave behind? To start off, with. Um, yeah. So there is. I actually have, I have a video on my YouTube channel that kind of that I send to sellers that that tells them, you know, who I am and why I love doing what I do, just so they can kind of meet me in advance. If it's somebody that I don't know, I mean, the majority of my business comes through referrals, so they somehow know who I am already. But if it's somebody brand new, then I absolutely send that video to them. That it just it's a quick intro on who I am and why I love doing what I do. And you really do love it. I just, I love talking with you because I can see in your your face and people can't see you, but I can while we're talking, but the enthusiasm over this passion that you have. But with every passion, with every job comes sometimes some failures or some disappointments. So is there anything you can think of that has happened in your career that was disappointing or that you thought you could have done differently that you could share with some <laughs> listeners? Every single day. <laughs> Every <laughs> single right. day something yeah. happens. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's it's the type of job where you don't quite know what's going to happen when you wake up. And, you know, the craziest things can happen basically every day. There's wins and losses every single day. And I just think that, you know, having the ability to push forward 
to just keep pushing forward, even though you had a loss, you know, there's another win in the pipeline. So as long as I can just keep pushing forward towards that other win, I'll figure out how to kind of navigate the loss, you know, in the meantime. Well, and that, that truly explains a lot about your success because you're right in this industry, you have wins and losses nearly every day and being able to just navigate beyond and overcome. So would that be the advice that you would give someone who wanted to pursue a career in real estate or, or do you have any other advice for someone who's thinking about getting into the business? What would you suggest? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, uh, again, it's one of those things that you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. And I think that your ability to push through the bad days and focus on the good days will keep your career going. If you focus on the one deal that's in the middle of falling apart, then all of the other deals that you have that are, are, are you know in the process of moving forward are on the back burner. So it's like the one that's falling apart has to be on the back burner while you push forward and you know, you'll find a solution. If not, then you know, you'll you'll find another buyer, you'll find another seller, and you know, you just keep pushing forward. So here's a question for you that if you look back to 2012 when you said you started real estate. Can you remember your first sale and how that came about? Yes, we I We all do. I think we all I remember. Could. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So I was sitting in floor time and a call came in for one of the floor. Uh, it was a foreclosure agent in the office that did a lot of business back then. And one of the calls came in for, uh, well, from a buyer for a foreclosure. And that was my first introduction into uh, <laughs> real estate was representing a buyer on a home that was like just destroyed and you know it was beyond trying to navigate a home inspection it was like you know now what do we do because the whole left side of the house is falling apart you know so it wasn't it wasn't a very easy transaction but it's definitely the one that I'm going to remember so that's just great so that's how you started that's, that's how I started yeah. so Sam, your business has really exponentially increased every single year. What are your goals for 2021? What do you see business being for you? What do I see business? That's a that's a good question. So, I mean, I really enjoy doing the videos and representing sellers. And I think that the more the local people see, you know, the videos and the advertising, the the busier I've been getting. And so, I mean, for 20 21, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm focused on is really changing the way an agent represents a seller in our market. So this is a question that I, I don't know that I don't think I've even suggested I, to prepare for, but if there was one, just one tool that you could use that benefits you in your business, a technology or market, just one thing that you could keep, what would it be? One thing that I could keep Everything else had to go away for the tools that you use to do your business. You know what? I I don't know. That's a really good question. That's a very, very good question. I guess the one tool that I would probably want to keep is my CRM so that I can keep track of all of the people that I interact with and have everything kind of categorized so that you know, I can stay in touch and, and keep my business going. Excellent. Excellent answer. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. So there's so much out there for technology and that we, you know, get overwhelmed with all the different things that are available to us. So if you can just choose one or two and, and hone in on them. So as you look for, forward to 2021 and beyond and, and after COVID, and as far as the industry of real estate, what changes do you think we may see as an industry in the next two or three years? So I, I think that, you know, 2020 was a crazy year, but it also kind of allowed everybody to, to kind of streamline business where now everybody has the tools to do things remotely. Everybody has the, the ability to kind of make things easier. You know, you don't have to, I mean, people are still doing open houses, but, you know, the way you market, the, I, I think the way you market things, as long as you market them towards the internet exposure, I think that's kind of where everything is heading, including like the video and all that kind of stuff. 
Do you think that there are skills that you have that go beyond exposing the property and the video? And I know, I know that you're an exceptional negotiator. How much do you think that plays into repeat business for you? Um, the the end game, you know, working through a yeah. transaction. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's more than just the, the video and, and yep. the marketing. It's, it's, it's having me represent you as a, as an agent, you know, it's, it's all the little things that I know, the, all the little details on not even just negotiating, but just, just the different steps that need to be done, you know, coming up with different plans, setting all the expectations. It's just, I think the, the package of having a good agent is kind of what, you know, sets you apart. Yeah. And I'm going to close on that, Sam. I'm going to close on the fact that we started talking today about the stress-free experience and the worry-free experience that you provide to your clients. And I think that's the most notable thing that you you offer. And as you said, you know, having you represent them is meaningful and, and leaves them in such good care. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that you think is a secret that you could just in part and on our secret. I don't know. I don't think I have any secrets. I don't, you know, it's just, you know, and and I think that kind of comes down to the team too. So, I mean, you know, if somebody has a question and wants to know how something works or how something operates, like I'm, I'm an open book. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. You know, as far as secrets, as long as it's, it's, this is the type of business that I think if you surround yourself with successful people and help those people make, or help those people become more successful that you in turn become more successful. So, you know, as far as secrets, I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of them. Great way to end this interview and always, always, always smiling, Mr. Sam Granada. Thank you so much for taking the time today. This was such a pleasure and best of luck to you for a wonderful, yet another wonderful year. Thank you, Sam. Yes. Thanks for having me.